Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. You join us with uh, On With Fritz podcast. And uh, part of our series, remember last time we were on with Nigel, it was World Mental Health Day. We're now into November, I think, with the day after the American election, is it? Oh, Trump yeah. Just got That's in and everything yeah. like That's yeah. it. Yeah. American yeah. election. Yeah. Fun and games, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Today, um, I've got another guest on, uh, Mr. James Hall, um, oh, yeah. good friend of mine, yeah. runs karaoke on a Friday night at the St. Fagans pub in Penard sort of thing. Yeah. And James, if you could tell us a bit more about uh, what you're doing and what life's yeah, throwing at the yeah. moment. Um, so, yeah, it's just, uh, I, yeah, oh God, I run karaoke and things like that, but I've been in the entertainment industry for the past like kind of 20 years now. Oh, sorry, what's yeah. the, what sort of stuff you've been doing? Like, oh gosh, so it was actually it comes full circle because I'm now I'm doing karaoke once a week in the fag, yeah. And I actually started when I was about 18, yeah, doing karaoke in the railway pub. Oh, nice, <laughs> and that's how I got, full got myself in and yeah. 20 years ago. It cut full circle, so um, yeah, I just I think uh, um kind of 18 and then I went back to college then to do a music technology course oh nice Fair play. so it taught me how to like do a lot of recording in the studio and that yeah, sort of thing yeah music production music type production thing. type yeah. of style so then I found I enjoyed it and then um, I had children very young yeah yeah so I, I couldn't myself. yeah couldn't go to university yeah. because it wasn't viable for me to carry on with that yeah so my father said um, right I'm going to get you a, a PA so nice. I'll get you your first PA system and you can just get out there and crack on with it and give it a go. So yeah. that's what I did. Um, used and to get just a, a little gigs. aside, his dad is um, Nicholas Hoare. Yeah, yeah. uh, he's a bit of a local celebrity himself with well, uh, some of the open mics and stuff, isn't he? <laughs> he calls, calls himself that, but really nice. so, you know, he, does, he does a lot of um, yeah, open mics and stuff. Like Tony, yeah. that He only goes on with Tony Morley and that type of thing. So he does a lot of... And my sister's involved musically yeah. as well, so she sings. That, that's Lauren. That's Lauren. Uh, yeah, yeah, and she sings, and it's kind of a family family affair, really. But yeah, I got involved uh, quite a number of years ago. Like how I originally got involved was when I was a kid, and my dad used to get vinyls. Oh, nice! So he had a record player. Oh, it's so it's something something a bit special about vinyl, yeah. isn't it? The you know, it goes on the vinyl, crackle yeah. and yeah. the dust and Just all that. Just nice something. stuff, like. But and he was. I think with CDs because they're so crisp now, aren't they? And the quality's so much up there, and with you know, um, what you call MP3s and stuff. Yeah. You, you yeah. miss a lot of that. That's but you yeah, know, the it's quality's playing... not there, is it? Yeah, it's like a nostalgia thing as well, like, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that that was definitely. Um, so growing up as a kid, I mean it was full of music like dad's record player he'd always have speakers yeah. and, and 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 his record player so then i remember as a as a child then he bought me my first kind of hi-fi system yeah and on the front of the hi-fi had little equalizing nice. equalizing knobs <laughs> if you like so i used to just mess with those and then i found that i enjoy djing so yeah. that's i started out like kind of djing uh using a program called tractor dj on the okay. computer so it was no decks or anything. It was like trying to get first into the how so you, old school. Yeah, the 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 kind of software and how that would work. And then I learned how to mix two tracks together and yeah. and beat match. Um, was that the bouncing down? Was it back in the day? Yeah, bouncing, yeah. You you record it and bounced it down. But um, it was learning how to like mix two tracks together on top of each other, sort of beat match, yeah. and getting the beats right and syncing yeah. and that type of stuff. And the volumes right and all yeah, that. Yeah, sort of yeah. So that, I started off that, and I was like, "Oh, I love this. This is great." And then, obviously, yeah, the music technology. But going back to my father buying me a PA system meant that I could go live, which yeah. was a completely different experience. Oh yeah, live. yeah, no, it would be because especially I, if you're not used to it. Like, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So when I was eighteen, um, yeah, I had a few <laughs> really bad gigs. Um, I had to deal with drunk people telling me that the music was absolutely crap and stuff. You oh, know yeah. what I mean? And just like being abused. And I was like, wasn't ready for that back then. I was like, yeah, yeah I don't want to do this. This is too. But yeah, as I as I gradually became used to that and like, right, okay, well, I'll have yeah, it for you next week. You've got skin for it, like, haven't you? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. And oh, I'll get that for you next week. Making sure that I did, then yeah. building up a rapport. Um, so yeah, I just went around the local pubs and then. Um, I started to like DJ at parties there. Yeah, and I think part of it is the connecting with your audience and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah. I, I think that's the main... A lot of people, like, a lot of DJs that I know get 
really technical. Yeah. You know, really technical and their mixing's phenomenal and the stuff they can yeah. do on decks is absolutely amazing. But like they got no think, social skills like Exactly. Yeah. So they don't they don't um engage the crowd or anything like that. Yeah. And the reason that I kind of can engage a crowd and can get used to a crowd and chat to a crowd is it's like building up the confidence. So I started the music thing when I was about eighteen. Yeah. But I started, uh, I went to stagecoach as a child. Nice. So I started it when I was about 10 Gives years. Gives you that live impetus. Sort of yeah, yeah. Like I was 10 years of age and it built up the confidence. Because going into auditions, audition after audition after audition, yeah. being turned down and told no. Oh yeah, well, you, you've, you've got a learn you rejection at an early rejection. age and for all that sort of thing. Right? Yeah, but the confidence that that gave me as a child was... Well, phenomenal. Well, absolutely. Yeah. And I could go and learn how to speak to people and be in front of any crowd. And yeah. So then it kind of gelled. So it was like the DJ thing, the music thing. It kind of gelled into one and the acting thing and being confident on the mic. Yeah, you know, I'll tell us a bit about, about the acting. You know, I'm quite interested. I do a bit of that yeah, myself. So. That's good. Yeah. What, yeah. what have you got? Uh, well, it's mainly my own productions. I, I used to sort of um, do like extras work and all that sort of thing yeah but these days it's mainly sort of i do my own music videos um, nice. yeah i've started podcasting recently yeah so yeah, yeah. Know, that's so why so i'm here <laughs> and it, it's got to be you know yeah get used to talking with people you yeah. know and having done the open mic at the x's and stuff i've got into like you said with you know um getting a connection with the audience yeah you know being yeah, able yeah. to speak and not you know be stumbling over words and all that sort of thing like, yeah yeah because i think as well sometimes you can get in your own head a yeah. lot and they're like, oh, flipping out. But once you overcome that and go, yeah. do you know what? I'm just going to give it a shot anyway. Like, I don't know how it's going to turn well, out. Well, you've got on you. You, yeah. know, you just so got to give it a shot. get out there and yeah. give it a go, you know. It's, uh, but that's, yeah, it's really cool. So, as I said, I always, start... always regret the things you have done rather than the things you haven't. That was uh, one of the quotes I was going to up sort of thing. So, you know, you might have not have the confidence to do it, but go out and do it anyway, like, look. Like, yeah, that's I mean... The, if you think about what the worst can happen is, generally it's not as bad yeah, as what people, you think in yeah, your head. Anyway, the worst, you know worst thing that can happen, people yeah. turn it off. Yeah, you yeah. Know, well, so, say, yeah. You know, not, not for me. Well, right, yeah. There you go. That's, and, and that's no biggie. No, because I think as well, like, music is so subjective. Yeah. You know, you like, when, and that's what I learned as well. Um, I could be playing a gig, I'll go back to the acting thing in a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's all good. I could be playing a gig and I could have a room full of like, say, 50 people in yeah. that room. So is, is this like it. DJing, yeah? D just DJing. Oh, cool. Yeah, just no, karaoke. I come along to one of yours uh, the other week at the fag, wasn't oh, it? Right, well, yeah. On Saturday night, you were DJing. It was pretty good stuff. Oh, actually, cheers, man. Thank yeah. you, yeah. But that's uh, Bob thinks you're phenomenal. He was sort of saying he was going. You know, <laughs> he said, "Oh, he's a fucking epic DJ." Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he said, "You want to get along and have a." Have so a just when you do it, you know, you do know, like what goes well and what comes after I mean doing it 20 like the DJ in a hell of a lot longer than karaoke and stuff so yeah. the DJ and I feel more, more really at home more at home yeah. you know and I because I've been doing it such a long so time given I know the what preference works. what would you prefer out of the two like I, I, 100% DJing DJing yeah. yeah because as well not only that um Towards the end of the night, you kind of get like loads of drunk people in effect with karaoke. Yeah. And, and it's like, oh, oh no, I've oh, seen it. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? So <laughs> it's like, like, come on now. You know, it's, it's a lot, it's a lot harder. Yeah. Like people don't realise the. Well, you're dealing with people lot, more directly, isn't it? Yeah. You know, it's and, harder, and when they're yeah. pissed, they get a bit more emboldened and, yeah. and, and they're over and they're in your face telling you how to do your job. Like. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's, I'd say a karaoke night is a lot harder. Like yeah. DJing, you can. You know, you'll get someone go up. Can you play that a, a yeah. request? But then that's that's it. Like you know, so you either play that or you don't. Yeah. But I learned like uh, from very young because I used to play say fifty people. Yeah. And forty nine of the people could be having a really good time and say your music. Oh, this is great. Yeah. And then you get that one person who will go. Do you know what? You you you're, you're, you're not you're, all you're that. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but then in my head. I'd focus so much on that one person. Oh no, it's easy done. And you're but... like, oh my god, and, and then you're in your head like, oh, I'm. You can have a hundred people tell you you're great. Yeah, yeah. You do something online like a video or a, yeah. a song or something like that. Like you'll have hundred people telling you how great that was. What yeah. a great experience listening to it. Watching yeah. it, whatever it was like. But you get that one snotty person. 
He says, oh, well, that was shy, wasn't it? Yeah. You know, and that's the one that gets in your head. Yeah, so, I mean, that's the part of it, is to try and not let it get in your yeah, head. Yeah, and that's the thing. I think when, you, when you're doing the, the DJ in live, I, I've learned now, and in my head, I have like a bit of a mantra yeah. that I'm doing my best. And I'm never going to please everybody. Yeah. And that's in my head. Well, I'm like, I'm doing my best. I'm not. Uh, quote. It was, um, you can please some of the people some of the time, but you can't please all the people all of the time. Exactly. Yeah. So that is like <laughs> what I'm like. Do you know <laughs> what I mean? And and as well to that person who, who has done before, I've yeah. overcome that in the in the moment. Yeah. And I've said, <laughs> I've actually <laughs> gone. Here's the mic. <clears throat> There's my decks. Yeah. You think you can do a better job? Yeah, show us what you're going to do. Right, yeah. What can you do? <laughs> and they've gone. <laughs> well, exactly. Well, yeah. Or do I come into your house as you're playing gaming or PlayStation or whatever? Yeah. Or do I come into your work and go, do you know what? Actually, you know, da, 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 yeah. let people get more confident after the drink, right? Then, so they're yeah. just like, and they're, so, they're so, always so what like, do you do for a little oh, lollipop man? Like, okay, yeah. well. Do I come along and yeah, try exactly. to take your stick yeah. and see the kids across yeah. the road? Put on the coat like, or whatever, right? yeah. you know what I mean? Like, yeah, okay, I'll come and do that. And uh, But so, yeah, I think, yeah, just learning that, to overcome that and knowing that you are in the entertainment industry and the music industry and it's not always easy. No, it's not. Uh, because you're playing to people who have got completely different perspectives and different opinions and different... Yeah. And... Yeah, it's just well, I found that with, with Nigel when I've done stuff with him, something. Sort of um, sometimes we do something, and people go nuts for it. Yeah, you know the viewing figures go up and all that yeah. sort of thing. But then other other times you you, you don't get anything like you know yeah. you don't get any feedback. That, you know people are just not watching it. You know, so you can never tell what sort of yeah mood the public's in. If you yeah, know, yeah, I mean, yeah definitely. Like, I think you know? it's just. I think that's like, like where consistent, just be just consistent and consistent. Yeah, just keep at it. Like, keep at it. it. And, yeah. and, and the main thing is, if you're enjoying something, like, do it anyway. Yeah. Like, it's not, I learned a long time ago that not to do stuff for the the reaction or, mm. like, you know. What, and more do it for yourself. Or just like, do it for yourself. Like, yeah. I enjoy DJing and I love, especially, like, weddings. I really enjoy yeah. weddings because weddings is really special because... You build up a um, a rapport with the bride and groom over yeah. the, the few months. They tell you what music they want. Yeah. You make their day with the first dance and yeah. their, their special music, and then their guests. Everyone's like in that loving, joyful, happy mood anyway yeah. because they're seeing their relatives get married. Yeah. You find that an emotional day. Yeah, and gu that. guests at a wedding don't always know each other. No. So they just met on the day. Yeah. Generally, they haven't and seen normally they family. stick the strangers on tables with each other, and it's just like, Ooh. yeah, so they've met as well. Yeah. So you're going into where it's like, and then the end of the night, you bring all those people together to have, and it's like, yeah, you know, I, I do, I do love doing the wedding side of things, but it's definitely kind of the DJ. And I should imagine it's, it's probably a bit more, um, oh, probably better money on weddings and stuff as yeah, well, yeah, yeah, like yeah, like, definitely because yeah. you do, you know, you do, as you say, it's not just that night, it's the the work that goes in over the the course of the couple of months getting their kind of requests um what they're wanting and really getting to know the bride and groom as, yeah. as well so you, you you leave with like sort of like you built up a friendship or whatever and yeah. you want their special day to be amazing um and so you know you, like, you do it well enough and they're going to be recommending you to other people as well that's that's basically that I mean. that is literally how i've sort of a word of mouth type thing it's, like. it's always my my business entertainment business has literally gone off that i've done yeah. adverts online i've done this that and the other and put money into it and it hasn't hasn't worked yeah always always this person's recommended you that person's recommended you. My yeah. auntie's recommended you. And there's a certain amount of pride comes with that as well. Yeah, like, you're like, you it's know, great. You've built you know. up this reputation. Yeah, that's, uh... it's really nice. Like, it's really heartwarming for me. Yeah. Um, and it's really cool. Um, so, yeah, that, that's like the kind of the music kind of side. And then I get to play like fast, um, festivals with, with, and um, stuff as well. Your production it's company, cool. is that, um, is it JNL? JNL Entertainment. JNL Entertainment. Yeah. That's, that's JNL Entertainment. Yeah. UK, oh, JNL Entertainment underscore UK is the. Is that um, James Nick Lauren? Yeah. 
It is, is it? All yeah. right, I, I did yeah. wonder though. Something we yeah. and Bob were talking about the other week. Was. Uh, it, it was J N K, but I'll, I'll explain that off. <laughs> it was another <laughs> name. Yeah. So I'll explain. I'll explain that one. But um, yeah, it's yeah, it's literally James. Yeah, and I I kind of come up with that because. Well, no, yeah, I mean it's you know always with that. the initials always sounds professional. Like, you know, it's you know, yeah. BBC, yeah, yeah, ITV, that's you know, it, you, yeah. You get yeah. your initials in this. So I had a really this. yeah thought that just came to me like I was like right, what can I? And I was just like, well, that makes you know that makes sense really. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's how that kind of came about. Um, but yeah, literally Friday Saturdays I do the music stuff, and then and yeah. then uh, in the week then I do do a lot of extra acting work. Nice. So, so do, do, any, any productions coming up that you can talk about? Well? Um, I did. I can talk about like kind of past production. I was very very fortunate enough to do uh, three series of industry. Nice. A program it was a BBC. Well, it was HBO originally. It's it's huge yeah. in America. It didn't really come over here. People didn't really yeah get it as much as the Americans, but. Yeah, it literally went massive over in. Well, no, that's great because HBO is now a subsidiary of Warner Brothers as well, right? Yeah, so, and then yeah. Ba and then Bad Wolf do a lot. Yeah. In, in this country. Oh yes, yeah, the Russell T Davis. So, yeah. Yeah. So they they do a lot, and uh, I, yeah, I was fortunate enough to, out of, yeah, like, there was a lot of essays. It was like over a thousand, like, used on the whole production. There were about a thousand essays. Yeah. And I was a core. Core essay was was part. Oh, of fair play. So the core <laughs> essay there was a top three to five. Did you get any lines with that? Or is yeah, that, I had a scene uh, in nice. that. Yeah, cool. I had a scene with the actors and stuff. So that was really cool. Um, and I, I would get um, sort of like. I got the most days because I was called because basically as you and I are sat here now. Yeah. This is how close, like to one of the main actors, I'd be interacting with him all yeah. the time and interacting with your main actors. Um, on, did you ever get show. into that um, TV show, the Ricky Gervais one, Extras? No, I didn't. <laughs> I've oh, seen right, it. Okay, right. It's great though, isn't it? Like, yeah, no, I mean, the, the, I think the thing I liked about that was, you know, you had all these big actors who weren't afraid to take the piss out of themselves. Like, yeah, you know, no, it was great. You know, I love that And it, and it that, gave so. a good little insight into yeah. the lives of Extras as well. Because you've done a bit of uh, extra work. Oh, well. yeah, many years ago, right? Yeah. But, uh, yeah. but it is, it's mainly, <laughs> if you go into it, though, you just sat around, basically, yeah, yeah, all yeah. the time. Yeah. But it's the people in the network and people you meet. It's just... Yeah. And that's why I like doing it, because no job is the same. And no, um, you know, no, like, kind of person you meet is the same. You, you just, yeah. like, just do it to network and meet loads of people. And, off, and it works really well with the disco thing when they find out, oh, you're a DJ, oh, can you... Yeah. It works really well in that respect, but, you know, the music... Yeah. But it kind of goes hand in hand, the music and acting, but... Yeah, so I did... Uh, I've done Industry, I've done Gavin and Stacey before. Nice. 2019 Christmas yeah. special, which was really cool. Um, and they have got another one coming out yeah. at Christmas time. Um, gosh. Uh, it's apparently, it's the big finale, isn't it? And the final episode? Yeah, the final episode, yeah. yeah, that is, like, but... Um, yeah, I've done uh, Sex Education on Netflix. Yeah. I was a teacher in that. Um, was that the one that um, Shooty Gatwa was in? Yeah, the, the one yeah, the new Doctor, Doctor Who now. Yeah. yeah, so I worked with him quite a lot. Oh right, okay. Yeah, so um, I was in Doctor Who as well with it. So it was yeah. really weird because we did Sex Ed and and uh, yeah, like kind of was in and around. You you can't really, you don't really know like if you're spoken to yeah. like by the actors. It's all right having a conversation with them, but yeah. I never would initially go, oh, 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 you know, <laughs> this is a bit of a, it's a, bit of a <laughs> thing, fan. isn't it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, you know, in this, this, because you don't know whether they're going through lines in their head yeah. or they're in the zone or they've security, got Security, security. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I was in a, I was doing a bit of extra work like, um, uh, with uh, Sean Penn the other yeah. week. That was really cool, but. Yeah, I've met I've met quite a few like actors, but yeah. a lot of people go, oh, what were they like? What were they? Yeah. But you just you yeah, don't... yeah, you don't want to do that publicly. <laughs> no, no, don't do, you know like oh, can we have a selfie and put your you, yeah. you just you just no. it's not something because it doesn't doesn't like look professional, and then you can just it's not really worth sometimes ruining your own yeah reputation or your own professionalism over. Um, but it is it is quite mad because 
a lot of TV stuff that you see on the, the massive stars on screen and all of that. Yeah. Um, but the amount of like long days and retake and reshoot and yeah. take one, take two, take three. And even in the end, you're like, like, "What was wrong with that one night?" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you just, you know, it's it's very much like a day of like they could be doing it's like ground the same, day. and it's not, yeah. it's not that easy. You know, no. it's not that easy to be an actor. And I always like well, well, that's what I mean when they just do like a segment of a scene or something, just yeah. because it's from a different angle or something like that. Like, you've got to make that flow from yeah. the scene previous and what it's going into in that way. Yeah, it? I mean the masterminds behind all of that sort of stuff. Yeah. I'll never know because some of the, some of the, it's amazing like how many people work behind the camera. Yeah, but we see two people on a screen. Or oh one yeah, well, that's on what I mean. Every, everybody, they're the, the face of it, aren't they? Of, yeah, the, the, the amount of people that go on them. behind that is it's unreal. It's, yeah, it's the post production team, isn't it? Yeah, the editing, special effects. Credits. Yeah, yeah. But that's the like during that as well. I am fortunate enough that um, some of my original music has been played in nice. in BBC show. It is called Sync Licensing. Yeah, where. A lot of people want to release a track, or a lot of artists will release a track on Spotify, and they want to be yeah. an artist, and they put it on Spotify and all of that. Yeah, I think but, my, my album into... got put up on there, like. Yeah. Yeah. So, but sync licensing is a different way. Is a different way in, like. Yeah. Is a different way of your music to be heard, okay. right across wherever the show is. Yeah. Do you so get royalties you... from that? Then? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, nice. yeah. Yeah. You get the royalties from that and. Oh, you'll have to let me know about it. I will, yeah. Album in on that. Yeah, honestly, because <laughs> yeah. if you put it into... And that's why it originally is who you... It's who, who you kind of know yeah. like behind who can make stuff happen. Yeah, really. well, that's what they're saying. It's not what you know, it's who you know and all yeah. that. Like, and that's yeah. originally why I got into extra work, just to chat to people, just to get out yeah. there and go, do you know what? What do you do? And, I, and I, I'm and i nosy as hell on yeah. set as well. Like, <laughs> I don't like, know what everyone's doing, what... You know, I'll go up and say, oh, what what role are you doing? Like, what's that about? What's that? And I'll ask questions yeah. and I'll go, oh, what, what are you doing there? Well, well, why are you doing that? Or yeah. asking different crew, Yeah. you know? Even though I'm an extra, I don't mind speaking to the crew. All right, yeah. I won't speak to the actors or whatever. Oh, no, it's the same I'll as always the, speak to crew. No, nobody knows what a key grip does. Okay, yeah. <laughs> key grip, yeah. Yeah, you see, you a, see him in the, in the credits at the end, like the key grip, and it's like, yeah, they just literally you grip a key. You grip a key. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it is that, and you've got all those funny roles, like sort of like a camera's assistant and yeah. color, color called, gradients. Yeah. And, yeah, it's crazy when they got all of that going on. But it's the amount of roles behind camera is yeah unbelievable. Yeah, so, yeah. Well, that that's the other half of the production, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And I mean, that's what makes the credits at the end just you know it it, it gives you a massive insight to the amount of people in a. Yeah. yeah, if you ever want to find out kind of how many people are involved in a production that you watch, yeah, just look at the credits because it's just, oh yeah, and they they they, they, they wind, wind like, on, don't they? Yeah, <laughs> massive like amount of people, but it is it's good. It I mean, it's it's good fun, and I I I feel really fortunate now that I can do two two jobs: the DJ and and the acting, yeah. and it's all I've ever wanted to do. Oh, that's brilliant! In my life, and, yeah. and it's like. You know, sometimes I think that you're yeah, out of work as an actor. There's massive, like, famous actors now who you think, flipping out, you're in this or that or the other. But yeah. it's few and far between. The actor, but it's not like a regular... Not regular not gig a regular like it gig, used to be. You know? like, yeah. So I'm lucky that I got, for myself, I've had to find yeah. that plan B. And, and that you've... You know, made these contacts in the biz, so to speak, yeah. to uh, yeah. be able to contact, or they can contact you at any time. Yeah, for any projects that are coming up, sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, it's, it is like, and I am wanting to go into, you know, sort of acting a lot more. Um, I'm realizing that now because I, I, as I say, I trained in stagecoach from yeah. year ten, so I've done like plays, musicals, um, and TV work. But it's very much like the TV work I've been interested. Like when I was a kid, I got involved then, yeah. and there was a lot more acting roles as a child, believe it or not. Oh yeah, no, believe that, it. Like, that, than, yeah. than an adult. So growing up in that, I've never really. Well, I think when you become an adult, it's a lot more competitive, like, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, definitely, it's 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 really really difficult. And if there's massively huge famous act like 
who've been on screen and it's like they've done a show and it's like they've done yeah i don't know eight series of a show and it's like where do you go from that yeah you know because and it's, it is you, it's you like reach the high don't you? Yeah. you get the heights of it and then suddenly it's like a real bring down or come down yeah the show finishes like yeah, and that's, I can imagine that was something like Game of Thrones or something like you know because that was uh, a few, a few act, you know, a few actors in in in, in there have, have, have never yeah never that, se- haven't seen them since like yeah exactly and that's that's the the downside to the to the industry really is is that yeah you could have the massive high and and again it's the same with like kind and, of and typecasting as well isn't it yeah you know, because if you get typecast as a certain character yeah. Then it's hard to get work after because everybody associates you with that character, like, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, sort of. I think, <laughs> I think I, I, I always see like I don't know, Harry Potter as Harry Potter. That's it. Like, yeah. it doesn't matter what he does. Like, yeah, I know. I've seen Harry him Potter the other week. I, I don't know. Are they yeah. doing like a Wolverine film with him or something? Possibly. Because he's bumped up and. You look at him and all you can see is bloody Harry Potter with qualify, you know? <laughs> He's just taking off the glasses like, yeah. to go in another film again. Yeah. Like but yeah, no, it is. It's uh yeah, it's great. So like when you did uh extra work and stuff, what what, what have you been involved in? Um well I was uh I think the last one as I say years ago was Rancid Aluminium. I think that was with Danny Bear and Danny Dyer. Yeah, nice, yeah. And then I think the production before that was something called Bloody New Year. Okay. Which was uh, supposed to be a horror that was filmed all around Barry Island. Yeah, yeah. And I think in the Paget Rooms as well. So it was like yeah. a weird time travel story thing. Oh, cool. Um, yeah. But, but the um, with that though, the actual did you did you have an agent and stuff? Did, no, no, it was just um, friend of friends. Just you know, friend all of friends, yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's it. Yeah. Part yeah. coming up. Do you want to uh, jump on in? I was like, yeah, yeah, go on then. Yeah, but that's, I was working in the it. post office when M two come along, like so. It's, uh, oh, sweet. Yeah. yeah, but it is like you meet so many different people, and I'd say like to anyone who is um, in retirement, yeah. looking to get out because in retirement you get like kind of isolated. Oh yeah, well, like, that's what I was telling you about earlier on. Chris Woods, he's yeah. um, he does a lot of the extra work, and he's mm. he's oh, he's got to be in his like mid sixties, something yeah. like that, like yeah. you know, and and he's in everything. Yeah, he's in Casualty. He's in the Publicum. He's yeah. in Stella. He's yeah. in you know Gavin and Stacey. Was, you know, that's great though, isn't it? But I he mean, seems to have a bit of a rep as a man at bar. Right. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. you'll always see him in a pub scene, stood at a bar. Yeah, <laughs> <like. laughs> uh, I probably saw him. He <clears> might have been in 2019. Yeah, But as well, like, what's really great about um, what's really great about the 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 sort of entertainment film industry the, the the tv stuff yeah it's a lot of it's come to wales now yeah and a lot of it's moved out of london for us as, as, well, as, as, bristol well, as well you know, there used bristol, to be a lot yeah. that went on bristol casual used to be in bristol yeah and, and then they moved to i think cardiff. and that's the, that's the yeah. switch i think as soon as casualty were like right we're gonna come to cardiff well, and build the studios one, um, that was it they had know? that old series they being human Yes, I one? remember. Yeah, I remember. It was like a vampire, like a werewolf, and a ghost. Right, okay. And that started off in Bristol and ended up down Barry Island, sort of thing. Mm. Yeah. I think as well, it's a lot, I, I mean, it's a lot cheaper, yeah. right? L- London's so, and with the, you know, with with, with COVID and the crap, and then yeah. since the cost of living, obviously the. the, the oh, country, indeed. But I mean, even it's from the, the same s- as America, isn't it? It's actually and cheaper for thing. film in Canada yeah. than it is to actually film in America. Well, that's why, like, the whole industry. That was filmed was was American, yeah. You know, so that came to to, to Wales, yeah, to be filmed <laughs> in Bad Wolf, <coughs> and um, yeah, that was that, that's that's why they came to to Wales because it was so much cheaper. And we have we're lucky, like round Wales, that we've got you know so many beaches. There's yeah. forestry, there's beaches, there's city life. A lot of there's, seaside there's a towns lot of and just, yeah, countryside. Know, yeah, yeah. It's like everything's here, isn't it? In Wales, it is. like, do you know what I mean? So, um, why wouldn't you want to film here? That yeah. type of thing. So, yeah, yeah. No, that's good. It's a good time to be in Wales. <laughs> Cardiff oh, yeah. and uh, so it's a good plug for Wales. Come to Wales. Yeah, come to Wales. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Yeah. Right, um, I think we're coming up to the end yeah, of it now. Great, yeah, so, no, it's um, been lovely to chat to you no. today, and uh, thanks for having me on the yeah, show. Mr. Yeah. James Hall, ladies and gentlemen. Cheers, and um, yeah. Right, I'll you... see you Friday for the karaoke. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, if the you want to come and sing uh, a song, come know, down. Yeah, and, uh, we'll be down there. You can see uh, Fritz's rendition of Sweet Sweet Dreams, Marilyn Manson. And and Sweet Transvestite. Sweet Transvestite, yeah. Rocky Horror. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Yeah.
Well, thanks, James. Much no appreciated, sir. Cheers. Um, okay, and uh, we shall see you again soon. Um, can't give a time scale on it, but uh, yeah, I'll be back on with more guests soon. And no doubt we'll have James back again at some time. Cheers. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Pleasure. You. Okay, thank you very much, and see you later. Bye-bye.